Hi, this is Vidya Krishnan, Associate Professor at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine and the Block 4 Homeostasis Block Co-Leader. I want to tackle a topic that comes up every year, the conventions of how flow volume loops are displayed in graph form. Please remember, I didn't create the convention, I'm only the messenger, but I want to explain to you how to interpret these graphs. This slide is a little busy, but I'm pretty proud of it. It explains how spirometry is performed and how it translates into the lung volumes and the flow volume loop. The video on top is something that you'll be able to look up online. It's publicly available on YouTube and was posted by the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, NHLBI, of Dr. Antonello Punturieri, demonstrating how to perform the technique of spirometry. You'll be able to hear the instructions on this video. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a synchronous display of the volumes being breathed with the x-axis representing time. This side and on the right half of the screen, you'll see the flow volume loops with the star representing FRC or functional residual capacity. mouth piece, so I need your lips over the outside portion of it, your teeth go behind it, teeth bind down the two tabs, and just want to be sure your tongue is not including the, the, uh, the, the hole in the mouthpiece, and just want you to begin with some normal breathing. All right, and now take a fast deep breath in and blast it out. Keep blowing. Keep blowing, keep going, you're doing great. Keep going, keep pushing out, keep pushing, keep pushing. And take a fast deep breath all the way back in. It's great, you can come off that mouthpiece. You can take those notes. So with that understanding of how spirometry is performed, you may encounter the display of the spirometry in flow volume loop graphs in different formats. In all flow volume loops, it is consistent that the x-axis represents volume, the y-axis represents airflow, down is the inspiratory limb of breathing, and up is the expiratory limb of the flow volume loop. In these three examples, you'll see that the x-axis is labeled such that the zero point is to the right of the graph. This is one convention you may see. In other graphs, like the first two panels here, you'll see that the zero is actually the point that crosses the y-axis, and the numbers turn positive as you go to the right of the graph. The second panel is actually how flow volume loops are represented at our Metro Health Pulmonary Function Lab. This final panel just doesn't even bother with labels on the x-axis uh, and leaves it blank. So these are also some conventions you might see. So then the question becomes, what is the right convention for labeling the x-axis? Is it A with the zero point to the left of the graph? Or is it B with the zero point to the right of the graph? Or is it C with no x-axis labels at all? So as you can imagine, the answer is not simple. So let's take each scenario individually. So let's go in reverse order and first start with the easiest one where there's just no labels on the x-axis. So the advantage of this format is that there's no labels on the x-axis, so there's nothing there to confuse us. But the disadvantage is clearly that you cannot get a measurement of the vital capacity or forced vital capacity that you would normally get from a flow volume loop. And that would be the distance from uh, where the loop crosses the x-axis. So this is not usually seen in actual clinical studies. This would probably be more a theoretical representation of the flow volume loop. Next, we'll consider the zero on the right side of the graph. 
the advantage of this display is that it may be a little bit more intuitive with the total lung capacity being on the left-hand side of the x-axis. And so it represents total lung capacity as the highest volume on the x-axis. But the disadvantage is that it incorrectly gives this assumption that there's some meaningful number here that is the distance from the loop, the flow volume loop, to the zero point on the x-axis. This is really not a clinically relevant volume. Remember that you cannot measure residual volume on spirometry. So this volume between the zero and the flow volume loop is really clinically meaningless. And finally, let's consider the zero on the left side of the graph. The advantage here is that now with this display, the furthest point on the x-axis where the flow volume loop crosses the x-axis now represents the forced vital capacity. That's the volume in the lung that can be breathed out from total lung capacity all the way down to residual volume. The disadvantage here is that it's a little less intuitive. Now total lung capacity as, is at the zero point on the x-axis. But what if you labeled the x-axis in this case as the exhaled volume? So at total lung capacity, the exhaled volume would be zero. And at the point of residual volume, the exhaled volume would be complete and would be the forced vital capacity. So then I ask you again, what is the correct convention for the x-axis? The answer is really all of the above. You'll encounter flow volume loops labeled in each of these ways over the course of your studies and your career. Just remember, I'm only the messenger. I didn't create these conventions, but you will see the x-axis labeled in different ways. Just remember that it's okay. They each have their advantages and disadvantages. The key is to understand the concept of what is being depicted and interpret it to apply to the physiology of the patient's condition. I hope that makes the conventions of flow volume loops a little bit more clear, maybe clear as a whistle. Thanks for watching and listening.